Hi! Welcome to Writing with Dev number nine. Is it a class? Is it a lesson? Who knows? All right. So, as you know, I've been a writer for about 25 years. I've written comedy, stand up comedy, television comedy, books, columns, kind of everything. I've kind of written everything apart from academia. Although, believe it or not, I did do an arts degree um, and I have a major in film and drama. Did no creative writing. I do not have any training whatsoever. Again, I'm from the Paduma Institute, the pull it directly out of my arts institute, and I'm here to help. So, I started Gunner's Writing, Ma I started Gunner's writing Masterclass in 2014. I thought I'd have, I'd do two classes. And as of 2020, March, I've run almost 400. I've had 6,000 people come to my Gunners Writing Masterclasses. And I now also get other people in to teach things like journalism, comedy, self-publishing, memoir, who knows? It's on my classes page if you're interested. When I first started, so my idea is I wanted to, to create a class. I'll tell you guys right now. Write the book you want to read. Write the manual that you wish was there. Uh, make the screenplay that you'd love to watch. Uh, write the song you'd like to hear. Create the YouTube channel you'd like to watch. The podcast you'd like to listen to. So I created the writing masterclass that I wish was there for when I was starting and when I was stuck. All genres, all levels, no sharing, okay? Want to write, want to write better, want to write different, want to write that thing you're stuck on, want to write and be happier about it, come to Gunners. I wanted to write it, uh, I wanted to run the Gunners, and I do, in beautiful places with fantastic food, uh, which is not educational, it's not like school or work, it's a gift to yourself. So when I started, back then, I made these mugs, which I sold, love a bit of merch, um, and um, on the back, there's a quote that says, fail while daring greatly. So, a lot of you now know that, that term, fail while daring greatly, or daring greatly, from a Brené Breen book, so, which is great. Um, good artist, good artist copy, great artist steal. It's actually from a speech by Theodore Roosevelt called The Stumbling Man. And I'm just going to read that quote, the, the part of the speech to you now. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who, sw who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who, at best, in the end, knows the triumph of high achievement and who, at worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be amongst those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. So don't you be a cold and timid soul. Go out there and fail while daring greatly. That's what today's class is going to revolve around. Uh, there's, a, there's a saying by Marcus Aurelius, which is, never let the future disturb you. You will meet it, if you have to, with the same weapons of reason that today arm you against the present. Love that. I don't know much about him, but he seems like a very cool dude. You know how I talked about... Um, bling there's lots of writing bling that you can get out there you can make your own pick up bits of currency or bits of um you know knickknacks around the house separate them into bags and use them for random stimulus and prompts um and i showed you the oblique strategies by brian eno there's these conversation cards uh, that i got and i'll show you the packet here um conversation menus and it's just one of the 
millions of things that I pick up to use in my writing classes. So we're going to start with um, a few very fast questions and answers. I'm not going to time them. You're just going to answer them. Okay. So the first question is small questions. What problem would you like to solve for other people? Question one. What problem would you like to solve for other people? Question number two, describe two meaningful moments you have had in your life. Describe two meaningful moments you have had in your life. Okay, what is a meaningful conversation in your eyes? So what's a, what's a, what do you consider a meaningful conversation is?
Well done. How has your quest for a meaningful life made relationships and your career more purposeful but more difficult for you? Okay, I want you to answer this. I'm going to say it again. How has your quest for a meaningful life made relationships and your career more purposeful but more difficult for you? More purposeful but more difficult for you. Does it mean that you've lost friends, don't make as much money, don't get as much sleep, come across more hurdles? I'm just going to read it again. How has your quest for a meaningful life made relationships and your career more purposeful but more difficult for you? Terrific. Well done. For the next 10 minutes, I want you to answer this question. How have you gotten through and how did you get through the hardest thing that you ever had to get through? So 10 minutes and the question is, how did you get through the hardest thing that you ever had to get through? I'm going to put the timer on. Okay. Because it'll get we'll get lost with this one. It'll just take... All right. Time is going on, 10 minutes. How did you get through the hardest thing that you've ever had to get through? Not if it's now, it's something that you've gotten through. How did you do it? 
How did you get from that difficult place to a place that made more sense? Five minutes, five minutes left.
30 seconds. Well done. That was full on, wasn't it? But you did it. You did it. Congratulations. I want to thank everybody who's donated to these classes on Patreon or Tribe Booking or wherever you've done it. Um, do keep, you'll never know, do keep in mind that you're allowing other people who do not have the privilege that you have or the generosity or the values that you have or just the cash to have access to these and they have really appreciated them. I can't tell you how much people are just, they're saying, I don't have any money, but I'm loving these classes. So you can thank yourself for that. All right, we're gonna finish off with a question. Jade has, has um, sent me an email. I have started writing a book slash novel slash story in the last month. The issue is I'm finding it challenging to write the protagonist from the first person and telling the actual story without it seeming choppy. The practical business of telling the story is the real reason you keep reading it. And paired with the inner voice slash learnings of the main character, I've seen it done so beautifully. Sophie Laguna, for example, can write such a moving, beautiful story from the point of view of a character who may be entirely uninvolved in their own emotional status. It's written in the first person and so beautifully, but the character doesn't necessarily have the beautiful voice. It's hard to explain. The Bell Jar is written in the first person with incredible breathtaking imagery and commentary, but in this case, the commentary is actually the characters. So how do I find the balance when considering the actual story unfolding from the first person's point of view who has a deep inner voice? I'm understating the inner voice. It has some emotional distancing, particularly as she herself is distancing herself from grief while actually in it. I've tried for the first, the third person's point of view with this story, but it seems neither story or character packs any punch. I'm all for understated emotional development, but it came across as too stilted and boring. I hope my question is clear-ish, Jade. I was going to tear it up. I was going to tear it up to kind of show, you know, my kind of fucking get over yourself. So I think the most important things, Jade, are you've just started. You have just fucking started. Stop overthinking. Mate, what a word salad that bloody email was. I don't even know the, what the fuck you were on about. I've written 10 books, thousands of columns. I don't even know what you're talking about. I just know if it feels right. Would I read it? Does it make sense to me? You're not Sylvia Plath and you're not Sophia Laguna. You're Jade and you're amazing. Just get to the end. You are teaching yourself what this story is and the voice that you are writing it in as you go. You're not going to know till the end. Do 100 hours and then have a think about it. Do 200 hours and then question it. You're saying that, um, well, the answer is I kind of don't have any idea apart from just fucking finish it. Just finish it. Do the updraft, the downdraft and the dental draft. Gold medal to overthinking. The, the, you know, We'll go to you, Jade. I have never... It was such a, like, you've only just started. And you're saying it sounds choppy. You've probably just got cook, cook's mouth. Remember what I said about cook's mouth? It's like when you're cooking in the curry and it's in your hair and, you, and you, the bolognese and you just can't smell anything. That's what you've got. You don't have any right to be talking about whether it works or it doesn't work or it's choppy. Just keep going. You won't know till it's at the end and you've finished it. And finally, writing is like being in the dark and wrestling some animal and you can't work out what it is and that it's in the dark and you can't f kind of see all you can feel and then when you finish you go oh i've worked out what it is it's a dinosaur and then the lights go on and it's gone it is just trying to get this idea and your voice to submit just keep going stop overthinking. okay that's it We'll see you for Writing with Dev number 10, whenever that is. Thank you again. The most urgent task is the, show, the showing of gratitude. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon, maybe tomorrow. 
maybe after you've had a cup of tea or pulled yourself. Thanks. See ya.